Hi, it's Dwyer. Saturday, April 10th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, gambling-wise, it was a losing night for me, thanks to Joe Smith in the championship rounds. There I was, about to hit on a plus 245, the underdog Maxim Vlasov, who I thought was ahead, going into the later rounds. Just what we talked about in the pre-fight video. I thought his rhythm was throwing Joe Smith off. I thought Joe Smith wasn't able to dictate spacing, wasn't able to get Vlasov cornered up against the ropes like Joe Smith likes. Joe Smith wasn't able to square up. It was a tough fight. Worse yet, Joe Smith had a swollen eye. Looked like he had problems seeing. But this is Joe Smith. I tip my hat. Uh, he beat my hedge. Uh, Joe Smith continued to throw volume. This is a determined fighter who even when he doesn't get his way, he's still heavy-handed. He's still throwing volume. At times, Joe Smith is even forced on his back foot in this fight. I thought Vlasov did as good a job as he could do. I thought I was on the way to a win. But then Joe Smith, in the 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds, mounted quite the comeback. One judge had the fight a draw. Understand, if that last round, goes for Vlasov, the fight's a draw, right? One judge would have had it for Vlasov, one judge would have had it a draw, the 115-113 would have been 114-114, then the other judge would have had it for Smith. But make no mistake, Joe Smith is high volume, he's accurate, he hits hard. Vlasov got hit with some shots that literally blew him out of the pocket at times, where Vlasov was jumping in, would get hit, he'd take two or three steps to the side to shake off the punch. Right? I know Joe Smith is upset about the shot that was ruled behind his head. Just understand, Joe Smith in those closing rounds was throwing murderous shots. Right? Vlasov did what KG vets do. He kept his head down. He didn't want to stand up because you can't stand up against Joe Smith when he's throwing haymakers. Right? Well, Joe Smith earned the decision, had the better closing than Vlasov in a fight where the opponent fought magnificently. Right? This is gambling. I thought I was on my way to a win. A huge upset. Um, going into the 10th round, Joe Smith closed. I congratulate the new light heavyweight champion. Let's talk about the revelation of the night. Folks, I was looking at Jaron Ennis against Lipinets. Right now, we'll just put it this way. Ennis was a minus 1800 favorite. He was a prohibitive favorite. Right? Understand, Lipinets is a guy who only lost to Mikey Garcia. He hits hard. He has Joe Goosen in his corner. Big time championship trainer. Right? Lipinets blew out Lamont Peterson, former champion. Right? Lipinets has been in some big fights. Here he was outclass. Ennis looked magnificent. Let me just say, um, there are moments in this fight where Ennis, from Philly, is in a Philly shell defense. And Ennis is so sure of himself that as Lipinets threw right hands, right hooks, Ennis has his defensive construct, does not move. In other words, he knew. This punch cannot hit my head. <coughs> it's going to bounce off my shoulder, even though my head is just tucked inside my shoulder. Right? Um, Ennis 
young fighter needs to be considered with the very best in the division. The knockdown was masterful. Let me just say this. One of the best fighters I have looked at in my time here on YouTube was James DeGale, right? I know that shocked some people, but DeGale could seamlessly switch from righty to lefty and back, right? Seamlessly. Nobody switches like James DeGale used to switch, right? Tyson Fury doesn't. Terrence Crawford doesn't. I'm talking about the few ambidextrous guys in the sport. Until tonight, Jaron Ennis is just fluid in switching. So after the fight, they're interviewing him. And they talk to him about the switching, about how he determined when to go righty or lefty. And Ennis honestly answers the question that it's just natural. He doesn't even know what he's doing. This guy's a savant. He's a savant. So let me just say, they're talking about him fighting Danny Garcia. I think he beats Danny Garcia, right? Quite frankly, he should be aiming for Crawford. He should be aiming for Errol Spence. This is a rare talent. Let me also say this too. He's throwing down a masterful performance against a fighter who I thought had a puncher's chance in the fight, Lipinets, right? Lipinets hits hard, Lipinets game. And Ennis goes to his corner, and his corner is completely unimpressed with his work, right? Of course, his cornerman is his father. Let's just say that there's a secret in the Ennis camp. I know Ennis on camera is trying to look deferential. He's saying, hey, I want a guy in the top five, right? Understand, this guy was throwing down a masterpiece. And his corner, which includes his father, expected more from him, right? The way he closes the show, it's the right hand that completely hurts Lipinets, right? But then Ennis swings around and hits him with a nice left hand that has Lipinets on the canvas for quite some time, much longer than 10 seconds. The referee goes over to Lipinets, waves off the fight immediately. This is a guy who calls himself Samurai. Understand, Lipinets is one of those guys who's not going to give up unless he's been badly hurt. In this fight, he was badly hurt. Right? The public knows Danny Garcia, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, right? The public knows all of those guys. They're going to be favorites against Ennis, right? You need to look at those odds carefully because if Ennis is going off at higher than a plus 150, he's the value side of the play, right? This is rare talent, right? Let me also make another point too. In the division, you have Virgil Ortiz. That's in the division. 147 is far more loaded than anyone realizes. Also, Ennis's boxing ability is such that if they don't give him a shot at 147, and I'll say, take Terrence Crawford. He's fighting Manny Pacquiao, right? Fight fans aren't going to blame Crawford for fighting a living legend instead of Ennis. If Ennis doesn't get a shot at 147, these are the kind of skills that would carry him to 154, right? Spectacular defense. The only thing that worries me about Ennis is Ennis does lean in the pocket. In other words, Lipinets is very dangerous. Lipinets is throwing huge hooks. Ennis is the kind of guy who just moves his head. He's so certain of himself, he just moves his head four inches and has the punch whiz by. Now that work tonight, it's not going to work against a fighter who loops his punches or who knows how to loop his punches, right? This fight style would not work against Lennox Lewis, right? A guy who can throw a hook, but oh, if you're slick, he'll loop the hook, right? Have you thinking you know the angle of his punches and then, of course, drill you. 
right? Let me also say, too, Ennis is a master in the pocket. Master. Manny Pacquiao would be an interesting fight. Because Pacquiao, of course, can fight you from outside the pocket. By the way, let me also say that Vlasov put on a clinic. You want to know how to beat a mid-range hooker. And I know Vlasov lost the fight because of the ending of the fight. Right, but if you want to look at how to beat a mid-range hooker, look at Vlasov early in his fight against Joe Smith. He's outside. He's herky-jerky. Right, he has that rhythm. It's a distinct advantage. Joe Smith can't get in rhythm. Joe Smith can't get mid-range. Right, occasionally, Vlasov pushes off on Joe, but not with his gloves, with his body. Right? So he has, you know, himself prepared for what Joe's throwing back. Also, Vlasov drops his hands so he can see Joe Smith's punches. Right? High risk because, of course, as Joe Smith is throwing hooks, Vlasov is bobbing and weaving. Right? Look at the beginning, the first few rounds of Vlasov against Joe Smith. That's how you beat a mid-range hooker. So let me salute both Joe Smith and Jaron Ennis, right? Joe Smith was in a great fight, right? Let me salute Vlasov as well, right? Didn't turn out for me betting-wise. The plus 245 was winning the fight after 10 rounds, I thought. Lost the fight after 12 rounds. All right, all right, right? But that was a great fight. Right? That was a nail-biter. Joe Smith barely wins. Let me applaud both men there. Let me applaud Lipinets for effort, but let me just say, Jaron Ellis, uh, Ennis, was spectacular. Right? This, you know, when you see a guy who knows what he's doing, right, who is even better than advertised, right? The switching from righty to lefty, and the guy was on the mark and fully coordinated in both stances. Right? Literally could swing from righty to lefty in the middle of battle as punches are thrown. Right? That was off the page. Right? That was off the page. That's not prospect stuff. Right? The fight he threw down tonight on Showtime was masterful. Right? I'm just telling you, no one is safe at 147. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by. Also, they're talking about Joe Smith fighting Arthur Berturbiev. Right? The bet that comes to mind, just preliminarily, is that that fight won't go the distance. You might be able to get great odds on just that prop because, miraculously, the fight tonight went the distance with Joe Smith. So a lot of casual gamblers are going to see that Joe just went the distance. They won't know the heroic performance that Vlasov threw down. And understand, too, what Vlasov was doing, Baterviev is not going to do, right? Baterviev is going to meet Joe Smith in the pocket and think that he has the heavier artillery, right? Here you had Vlasov outboxing Joe Smith for some rounds, right? Here, Vlasov wasn't trying to get hit, didn't want a shootout. A shootout ended up happening. But Vlasov didn't want a shootout. Joe Smith, Baterbiev, that's a straight shootout. I'll be surprised if that fight makes it to the ninth round. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by and congratulations to the winners.